Hello, this is Howard, the Teaser King, coming to you with week 11 of the NFL for 2013. Uh, I have a pretty good slate. I have super, super high lock going this week. Uh, one in uh, the biggest lock is in the pros. I have a lock going in college also, but the pro lock is the highest lock I've had all year. It's, uh, this should be a, a very very easy win, uh, big high trends, and with very good teams, good quarterbacks, and uh, you know, I, I have very little doubt on this. I've made some big bets on the game, and uh, you'll see that in the site. Um, well, let's talk about some. Who do we like here? Now, what's happening now? There's a lot of injuries to quarterbacks and just regular injuries like Green Bay, Chicago. Um, just to name a few. So you've got to understand, is the backup any good? They're all pros, so the backup's still a pro, so it becomes, what do you do with it? Um, well, let's go to the Green Bay Giant game. Now, normally, if Rodgers is playing, Green Bay's probably a three-point favorite here. You know, you probably watch the game. It's hard to take the Giants against the Packers. But with the Giants lane five without Rodgers you gotta like the Giants here I think the spread's low with Scott Tolzien he wasn't anything at Wisconsin I really shake my head and I really don't understand here's a guy they don't watch him in college I mean if they're any good and they're winners they show it in college so you draft the Josh Freeman you draft the Scott Tolzien the Curtis Painter they're not that good in college what makes these pro teams think they're any good in the pros the guys that are winners in college are winners in the pros. That's They're winners. They know how to win. Period. And a lot of these uh, these guys in the pros that struggle, they don't know how to win, basically. I mean, you got the, the, the kid on Jacksonville. Uh, I don't even want to remember his name. He, he's terrible, the starter who's hurt. Sorry, I can't remember it. Boy, it, it's been a while. Uh, Blaine Gabbard. I mean, he, he's terrible. He was terrible at Missouri. Why they would draft him at all, I don't know. Why they draft him in the first round, I don't know. And then you got Kellen Moore, who led Boise at 50 points a game, and, and they, they, nobody even drafts the guy, and their excuse is he's too small. Well, I think the linemen in college are 6'6", six, six, and 6'7", six, and 300 pounds, so it really doesn't make any sense at all. Um, anyway, back to this. Uh, the Giants laying the 5 to Green Bay. I, I like the Giants here. There's not huge trends on the game because, first of all, you can't trend Green Bay without Rodgers. Secondly, the Giants, lane five, are a terrible home favorite, but this isn't a normal game. So here's where the trends are out. and Here's where it's, uh, it's all science but a little bit of art, and here's the art is picking the game without the trend, and that's what I'm doing here. The Giants take the point. Should be, uh, they should win the game. Green Bay's defense a little banged up. Again, without Rodgers, they don't have balance. Uh, I don't see this this Wisconsin quarterback who wasn't good at in college doing anything here. He might surprise. He might do because the Giants. But the Giants will pressure him, and they don't have much of a running game, Green Bay. Um, next game I like is uh, Denver laying 8 to KC. Let's talk about the big game of the week. Uh, I, I like Denver here laying the 2. Um Kansas City is probably the spread's probably a little bit low. I think it, uh, I think it should be 10, 11. Uh, Kansas City hasn't played a good quarterback really. I don't think all year, uh, except for Tony Romo, and it was 17, 16. And t we all know Tony Romo's problems. So uh, outside of that, this isn't Buffalo and Cleveland and Jacksonville, and they played Philadelphia and, and they beat the Giants when they were terrible. So, outside of that, uh, you can say KC's got a great defense. I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. Uh, when you play inferior quarterbacks, uh, I don't see it. Okay, they beat Terrell Pryor. They haven't played Phillip Rivers yet. They haven't played Peyton yet. They got uh, no... Who are they playing? They got... Uh, what's NFC teams? So they got the Giants, the Eagles... Washington and Dallas. So they beat Dallas. 
the Giants and the Eagles. Pete, they beat Eli Manning. I'll give him credit there. One of these big interception games, I believe. But outside of that, really, they haven't beaten anybody. And I don't, uh, you know, I look at their personnel. Alex Smith, average quarterback. If he was so good, 49ers wouldn't have let him go. Um, their defense, it could be strong, but Denver's played a lot tougher defenses than this. And uh, I'm not sold on Kansas City. Let's take it to an Eagle game. Let's say it was the Eagles with Denver when they had Donovan and McNabb. I'd still be on Denver at home with Peyton Manning. Uh, if you looked at it as the Colts against the Eagles when Manning and McNabb and the game was in Indy, I'd be taking uh, I, I'd be taking Indy there at home. But again, you don't have Donovan McNabb as the quarterback. I mean, Alex Smith is no Donovan McNabb. So basically, I, I think under three, you take Denver. If it goes over nine, you maybe play a very small Denver or you take KC in the 15. But I don't see this game, you know, this is not going to be a three-point game. I think Denver gets on them and puts up, but puts up a quick 20 or 28 on them like they did against San Diego last week. But Phillip Rivers only could get 20 on them. And Denver's got the defense, and when they play at home, very strong team, so I really like Denver laying two here. Um, enough said. I mean, the trends Denver. Peyton beat them be both times last year. I don't really see an issue here. Um, I'm not sold. This could be the worst 9-0 and team I've ever seen in my life. I mean, okay, if they're that good, why aren't they blowing out Cleveland, Baltimore, or Buffalo, somebody? Blow out somebody. I mean, they just, I don't know. We'll see, but I, I like Denver a lot. Um, next game will be uh, the Bears against the Baltimore. The Bears are laying three without Cutler. Um, their backup's good. I don't mind him. That's a case where you're not losing a lot. Baltimore is Baltimore. Flacco, he's average. They don't have a Bolden. Um, they do have some running. Against the Bears, their weakness seems to be a good passer, but I just think this will be a defensive game. I like the points here. I love taking dogs, and I love taking um, strong dogs or dogs that have a good defense. That's really the key to it. Flacco will do enough to keep him in the game. He got nine points. I'm not so. I mean, Baltimore's not the playoff team they've been without Ed Reed and without uh, Ray Lewis. I get that. Bolden's gone. Flacco's totally overrated. I didn't see that contract was one of the stupidest moves I've ever seen in my life. But basically, um, I don't think the Bears are that that strong anyway. Um, they should have beat the Lions last week. That was a joke. They were the interception at the goal line. But I like uh, I like Baltimore getting nine here. Uh, it's a good dog. Chicago is really just they're 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 a decent team with nothing special. And the last one I'll talk about is Detroit laying two and a half to Pittsburgh. Uh, I like the dog in this game. Um, I know Pitt got torched by Tom Brady, but this isn't Tom Brady on Detroit. Um, what's his name? He throws a lot of interceptions. Uh, Stafford. Man, I'm having brain uh, name problems right now. Stafford's an average quarterback. He just throws the ball to Calvin Johnson. Last time, he, I think last week against the Bears, he threw it to him like 20 times. He doesn't know where the good receivers are open or the other receivers. Occasionally, they throw in a Reggie Bush run. He's going to get two, three interceptions a game from Stafford. And basically, I'm going to say this. Kellen Moore should be the starter there, not, not Stafford. Kellen Moore would not make these games close, and he wouldn't turn the ball over. Four years at Boise, he had 24 interceptions and 125 touchdowns. This is a guy that doesn't make mistakes. Stafford makes mistakes all the time, two, three a game. And really, all he does is throw the ball at Calvin Johnson. I mean, it's really, it's not even a play. It's just he throws it high and Calvin out jumps him. But, again, these teams are, are really stupid. Last week, the Bears didn't double-team Calvin. It's like you take Calvin away and you make the Lions beat you with the other receivers, and that's it. And the good teams are doing that, and the Lions struggle against the teams that 
come from one on one, which I don't understand. These are the teams that the Lions are beating. Well, Pittsburgh will double team them. Dick LeBeau is smart enough. Pittsburgh will get some pass rush on them. Uh, again, this isn't the same Pittsburgh, but Detroit as a road favorite is, is lousy. They're an average road favorite. Uh, they're bet against road favorite. They just don't blow teams out. Detroit might win this game or it'll be a close game, but we're getting eight and a half in Pittsburgh here. And that's the point. I mean, Pittsburgh is a home dog. They're not home dogs often, and when they are, they cover most of the time. But usually it's against the Denver with a Manning or an Indy with a Manning or Tom Brady, and, you know, that's different. This is The Lions are not in that class. They're not strong enough to be road favorites. And Every week I've been betting against them as a road favorite, and every week I've won. Um, they just, you know, at Arizona, at last week at the Bears, uh, they're just not the same. And a lot of the reason is at home they have the crowd noise, so the defensive line, you know, the crowd's noisy. The offensive line can't hear the snap count. Gives the defensive line an advantage, but on the road, on grass, I hear it's, I think on grass, they, they, they're they a little bit slower. They don't get the advantage of the crowd where the offensive line can't hear, so basically there's no advantage to it. So they get neutralized a little bit more. Their secondary is weak. I think Roethlisberger can find enough here um, to keep the game competitive. Uh, I'd say it'll be in the 20s, 24, 21, 28, 24, and I don't know who will win. I'm not, you know, this game's dead even. I mean, yeah, Pittsburgh, you know, is not. This isn't the '76 Steelers, unfortunately. But uh, this is, you know, they're still got Roethlisberger. He's the key. As long as you have him, they'll find ways. And I know they're a little bit hurt, but Detroit's not a road favorite. Not at this point. Not against a team like Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh. Not going to happen. Uh, so anyway, I noticed seeing a line on Houston move to nine. Over Oakland, I don't get that. Houston's lost seven in a row. They can't beat anybody. I do like Case Keenum there. It's another guy. How does he not get drafted? It's just mind-blowing that this guy doesn't get drafted, and he's one of the best quarterbacks in college. So they, these scouts and GMs are really clueless how to draft talent. I mean, it's so obvious that you can see teams like Minnesota and Jacksonville and Kansas City. They don't even know how to draft quarterbacks. I mean, it's it's... It's scary. Or the best is they'll draft Curtis Ponder at Minnesota, and then they'll keep him around for two, three years, even though he can't do it. Now, if you're working at a normal job and you can't do it, they, they let you go. Or they give you a different position. I mean, they can't in the NFL, but this guy doesn't belong there. So anyway, these are the picks. I did not give you the locks. You'll have to go to the site and get them. They're very, very strong. You will make a fortune on these locks, and you can put them in other teasers. And that's what I normally do is I'll get it. You'll see my results. I put a lock in two, three, four games. And really the key to betting teasers is not to play four teasers with eight different teams because you're going to go, I'm going to go six and two. I'm going to go seven and one. I'm not going to go eight and no. Oh. I can't go eight and no. Oh. I wish I could go 100%. It's impossible. So if you, if you make four teasers and you hit six and two, that's two losers, and you're going to have... Uh, so you're going to have four teasers, and that's two winners, and you break even. And you lose on the juice, because they've made the juice 12 to 10 instead of 11 to 10 or even money. And that's the problem with it. That's why when you get the lock, you put it in three, four different things. Now if I put the lock in three different games with three other strong ones, now I'll lose one of them, but then I'll win the other two because I really don't have, you know, I, I'm allowing myself to lose the game, and then I go from there. But when the game's so strong, that's why I tease it. And that's why I put the lock in many teasers, because I you know, I know that's going to win. So now all i got to do is pair it up. If I play three different games with the lock, i got to win two out of three of those, and that's it. So I'm going to have my loser, I'm going to win the other two, win my lock, and off I go. So that's how you play teasers. Another way you can play a teaser is to bet like a Saturday game with a Sunday game, and you win the Saturday game. Now you got the Sunday game. Let's say you got it. Let's say you've you've taken uh, Denver minus two and you've played it with uh, Michigan State. Even I took Michigan State. I think it's on the college one. So Michigan State wins. They they beat Nebraska 24 nothing. All right, I've won half the teaser. Now you got Denver minus two in the other half. Well, what you can do, let's say it's for 500. You can play, let's say 300 or 400 on Kansas City and eight. 
And I'm not saying Kansas City Eight's a good bet or not, but what I'm saying is I can't lose. I either win 500 on the teaser if Denver by two, or if Denver doesn't win by two, I'm going to win 400 on the teaser with Kansas City plus the eight. Or let's say I even bet 500 on it, so I break even. I can't lose. But if Denver wins by three, four, five, six, or seven, or even two or eight, I still win. The Den let's say Denver wins by three. I win eight, 500 on Denver and 500 on Kansas City. I win a grand. I cannot lose a grand. I'm either going to win a grand or I'm going to break even. Or maybe I bet 400 on Kansas City, so I'm either going to win 900, probably win 100 because I love Denver, and in worst case, I lose only 100 because I've got Kansas City in eight. But that that spread of three, four, six, and seven are beautiful numbers that you can easily trap the game and win both ways with it. So if you get those games, and I've done that many times, that's how you really rack it up because you can't lose. I mean, if I got 500 and 500, right, I'll lose $50 juice, but that's it. But I can win a grand, and it, and it's not like... It's not that hard because you have that six-point spread to do it. Plus, if you tie, if they win by two, you still you don't lose the teaser, so you get your money back and you still win the five on the other way. And if they win by eight, again, you win the teaser and you tie on the other, so you really have seven points to, to play with. So it's a it's a it's a defensive type of bet. Um, it's just something you can do if you're you know if, let's say you're having a big week but you don't want to give back five hundred or a thousand, then go ahead and trap that that late game or play a Sunday with a Monday night with the intent of trapping it if it's the right spread and then you go from there and that's really what you do or you can tease it too and give you more outs you can you can then uh, you got Denver with Michigan State and then you can play Kansas City you know maybe with the Giants so now you got you got a 14 point window here so if the spread if they win between 2 and 14 you win one half Maybe you win, the, you, know, you win both halves of it. So a lot you can do with the teaser instead of just betting four, you know, two teasers, four different teams. You win one, you know, you lose one of the teams, you break even. It's not how you bet teasers. It's not how you win with it, and that's not how I win with it. I win getting that lock, putting it in three, four teasers for big money, and I might play a few others. Like, and I might play Denver for 500. I might play the the, the Steelers with the Giants for 200. So if I lose the Steeler game or I lose the Giant game, all right, but it's not that 500 on that that strong game, Denver. So that's kind of what I do, and that's how I've been very, very successful uh, making money at this. It's not picking four games and trying to go four and out. Like, you can't do it. It's very difficult. Usually, you know, you're going to get a couple of losers, but that's it. So again, I have uh, the locks and and uh, a couple other strong games. So please go to the site www.teaserking.com and, and these blocks. I mean, I bet them very, very hard this week. I highly recommend it and put them in two, three teasers like I've done. All right, this is Howard Teaser King. Please, if you have any questions or comments, if you want me to analyze the game for you, please let me know, and I'll be happy to do it. And good luck to everybody. And please buy this lock. I mean, a couple weeks ago I couldn't find one here. I found such a strong one. It's unbelievable. Okay, have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you very much.